welcome to all of you who have come to join together in the sanctuary for worship together. And we are delighted to have Camille. Do not think one thing about her little babbling because it's beautiful and we love it. We have come to worship God and we will begin with our call to worship. Would you please join me in that? Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Praise the Lord. And be praised. Stand for our first hymn. Please be seated. We'll take just a moment to talk about things that are in your bulletin. Remember, there is a luncheon following immediately after this service, and you are all invited to come. Please come and celebrate the day with us. Fall day it is. There are also things going on during the week. Uh, we will have a, a Wednesday program as usual on Wednesday the Bible study on Tuesday, and the session meets on Monday, so it will be a full week of activity. We had a great 
experienced, um, especially Catherine and Everett did last week as we joined in with St. Mary Parish to collect water to go to uh, Jackson and uh, the Ratcliffs transported most of the water. I think one other person helped to take water to Jackson. So thank you for your participation, if you participated in that. Thank you for uh, looking into all of the announcements you see in the bulletin. Find your place where you might find a ministry that would be appropriate for you. And now, as we do at this time, we will turn to God to cleanse our hearts as we prepare to hear God's holy word. Join with me in the call to confession. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sin to God together. Merciful God, we have lived for ourselves instead of for you. We have turned from our neighbors and refused to bear the burdens of others. We have not done justice, loved kindness, or walked humbly with you as you teach us to do. Forgive our sins and lead us to your light for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. The news is such good news. The mercy of our Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, we know that our sins are forgiven. So be at peace this day. Amen. And now stand as we give glory to God. As those who are forgiven through Christ, we do not want to fail to forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you today. Also with you. Share the peace of Christ with someone near you from your pew. It's wonderful to see all the little ones coming forward with their backpacks, so that is an exciting time when we get to bless the backpacks and talk about God's blessings for you for all of this school year coming up. So if you'll just get here in the middle uh, where we can have everybody together, we're going to join together and have a blessing of your backpack. I hope that you have lots of things in your backpack, things that you use uh, at school, 
because as we bless those, uh, a backpack will bless everything in them. Now, I would like for all of you who are seated right here to do something with me. I'm going to say my family, my friends, and my school, and after that, I want you to say, Jesus is with me. Let's say it together. Jesus is with me. Okay, I'll give you the cue. When it's the night before a school day and I'm ready for sleep, when I arrive at school the next day and say good morning to my teachers and friends, when I'm listening to my teacher and learning new things, when the school day is over and I'm telling my family about the day, when I'm praying at night and thanking God for my family, my friends, my school, Jesus is with me. Jesus is with you in all of those times as you prepare the night before, as you go to school the next day, and as you come home to tell your family about what happened in school that day. So we're going to pray together now. Let's say a prayer together. Please bow where you are. Thank you, dear Father in heaven, for always being near to us. We know that if we get nervous or afraid, you will be there with us. When we see the cards on our backpacks that we're going to get today, we will remember that you are with us. We know that we can talk with Jesus anytime. We thank you for Jesus. Amen. And now to the congregation. Oh, holy God, the school year has begun. As these your children study and grow during the year ahead, we ask your blessing upon their backpacks in which they carry the books and notebooks, the markers and pens and the pencils they will use to learn. We ask for your blessing upon the tools they use during their days at school. O oh Lord of life and love, hear our prayer. Bless, O oh God, all who will teach our children in the coming days and weeks and months. Give them, give them wisdom to find inspiration for each child. Give them energy and creativity and love that will make their work a blessing to our children. O oh Lord of life and love, hear our prayer. Bless, O oh God, all school workers, that they may be faithful stewards of the resources entrusted to their care. Bless them with a spirit of grace and compassion, O oh Lord, of life and love, hear our prayer. Bless, O oh God, each one gathered here, that we may see you more clearly, love you more dearly, follow you more nearly. O oh Lord of life and love, hear our prayer. And bless, O oh God, all of our cherished children. Keep them safe. Keep them excited. Keep them ever seeking to learn more and to develop their gifts. Grant that through the months ahead, they may gain the tools to grow in love and faith and service. O oh Lord of life and love, hear our prayer. That concludes our blessing of the backpack. And if there are children who want to um, expect to go to um, church across the street, uh, there will be a, a possibility that you do that, but we hope that you can stay for a little while longer in your pews. Uh, shall we give it a try or not? Who, wa who wants to go? Are some of you expecting to go? Okay, all right, all right. Some of you parents are expecting to go. <laughs> That is the question. <laughs> so are you girls are you girls going? Okay. All right. I think I think Claire and Mac are going also. You'll be a big help. Thank you. You can help with the little ones. All right. Edie Case and Elise are gone. All right. Is that everybody? Or if you want to go, if, oh dear, good. She's got a big class this morning. Good, good, good. Would you go see, be sure that Randy is there to help them across the street. They may not be expecting that final little tag. Okay, well thank you, and also for bringing your backpacks as well.
Let us pray. Lord God, may your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us grace to receive your truth in faith and love, that we may be obedient to your will and live always for your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. <clears throat> a reading from Psalms. O oh God, you are my God, I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips when I think of you on my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. A reading from 1 Timothy. I am grateful to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the example to those who would come to believe in him for a eternal life, to the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen the word of the Lord. Thanks Thank be to God. Stand for our next hymn. Please be seated. We continue our reading with the gospel reading, which is a reading from Luke. Hear the word of the Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the, 20, the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, 
rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The word of the Lord for us today. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. A favorite Bible verse for many who have approached the sacred text, uh, the sacred uh, task of teaching young people have chosen, many have chosen these verses from uh, the Psalms. I think of it first when I think about going to teach children. So hear these words. How can young people keep the way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Do not let me stray from your commandment. I treasure your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. This verse from the Psalms applies to many people, to any people, not just to young people who are maybe in the beginning stages of learning about their faith. In our sweet words from the Apostle Paul this morning, we hear him recount the gift that was given him when the risen Christ appeared to Paul and called him as a disciple. That amazing story is told in several places in the Bible, the most notable probably in the ninth chapter of Acts. That is a story for all the world to hear. Paul tells the story here in our reading from the epistles from Timothy as a lesson for his young student, Timothy, who is in training, you might say, to become a Christian leader. Paul wants Timothy to hear clearly Paul's confession of having been somewhat of a scoundrel toward Christ and his followers. Paul uses these words, blasphemer, persecutor, man of violence, to describe himself, what he was before Christ appeared to him. Could there have been anyone in more need of God's grace in Jesus Christ than Paul? He thinks not, but Paul explains to Timothy the genius of the divine choice of him above all others to be converted and sent to establish Christian churches. Is there anyone who might have been a better example of someone who needed God's grace? No, Paul says. Could this be the best example of how God takes the lost one and changes him into a believer and then has him serve in love and truth and faith? Yes, Paul says. Yes, that is what has happened to me. Paul sets himself on a pedestal not to be worshipped or adored, but to be seen as an example of what God can do, making me, as he said, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. When we pair these loving words that Paul writes to Timothy, his little mentee, we find a theme emerging. God is reaching out into the obscure places of the world. God goes into the darkness, into the margins where people have been pushed, even to those places where there are enemies to God's will. God seeks the lost there, and there is more joy in heaven than we can imagine as one person, one such lost person, is brought from dark into light. Well, most of us have witnessed or maybe experienced some kind of conversion experience, probably not as dramatic as Paul's experience, but we have seen conversions change the lives of people and maybe change our own life. People who had no faith to begin with, or people who had forgotten their faith, who find it again, 
people who lived in abandon, who had given up and thought, I'm just going with the flow. And we know so many who are doing that today, living not in God's way, truth, and life, but in the flow as culture takes them. But here we sit, doing our very best to live in the way that we are called. And Paul reminds us that this is the way that Jesus brought him. After blinding him, it wasn't an easy thing. He knocked him down and and caused him not to see for three days. But he was truly saved by Christ himself. Not just so he could live the full and beautiful life, bathed in the love of Christ for the rest of his life and sitting around talking about it, but so that he could go out and do what God had planned for him to do. And that was a big plan. Paul never could have imagined how big that plan was. In the gospel reading this morning, Jesus is about to tell two little parables when he turns to the crowd. This is right before chapter 15 begins, and he says, let anyone with ears listen. And then he starts the parable, and this is how it begins. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. They heard what he said. They were coming near to listen to him. Well, what about the religious leaders who were constantly grumbling about Jesus, the people and and grumbling about who he chose to have dinner with? Here's what Luke tells us there. The Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling, saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So then Jesus tells the two short parables with similar themes. Something important needs to be found. It's not easy to find, but these are very much the ones, the very ones God wants to find, the ones God seeks with love and grace. A little sheep that has gone astray can be hard to find. A little sheep will become disoriented, frightened, will hide under a bush, or fall into a ravine. A coin on the dirt floor of a little hut-like house can get lost easily in the dust or get stuck in a corner and not be found. Both parables go to great measures to reveal God's determination that the lost will be found, just as Jesus goes to great lengths to approach those tax collectors who were believed to be sinners because everyone thought they were crooked and that they overcharged people. They were all considered, all lumped together, considered to be sinners against the people. Here are the lost ones, the ones most likely to be targets of our Lord Jesus Christ. Even today, those who are looked down upon those who seem to have no interest at all in learning about faith. Jesus says in the fifth chapter of Luke, I've come not to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. And for us who must acknowledge our own sin, and we do every week have an opportunity to confess that we are sinners, for us, the lesson is clear. When we shun the brother or sister who is lost, it's like abandoning the lost sheep or not paying attention to the valuable coin that has been lost. For us, the lesson reaches into our hearts to whisper a reminder. God has touched us and claimed us and has made us his church for a reason, to be the hands and feet of Christ, to love as he loved. And as he loved then, when we read in Scripture, and as he loves us now, today, in our own life. He calls us to follow, and that means going and seeking the lost. It means repenting every time we need to repent. And then there is, oh, there is the joy. We must not forget the joy that 
we hear in both of these little parables, rejoice when something's found and then share that joy with the whole village, with all the friends and neighbors. It is in finding us that God finds his greatest joy. In finding any one of us who's lost our faith, have started to doubt what we believe, We may think, well, I'll be a good Christian this week, but, you know, next week, who knows? Repent, Jesus says. Turn around and see me. Then follow me. There will be joy in heaven, but joy in the heart of the one God finds. There's joy right now, this morning, as you come to this place, clearly hoping to find God's grace for your life. Can you imagine that you give God joy just by being here, coming to do with your life what God has called you to do, to worship and adore him, and to give him credit for all of the wonderful things you have around you, all the good things in your life that have happened, and with you in all of the times of pain and darkness. How wondrous a God is that. How can young people keep their way pure, the psalmist asks, and wants us to ponder. And Christ would answer, follow me, listen to me. All praise and honor and glory be to the one true great God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, please pray with me. Father, guard our hearts from all of those things that can distract us from you. Thank you for bringing us together and for giving us your word. Thank you for the joy that we know you feel when we gather together and seek you and praise your name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to gather now near the font for the reception of new members. So I I would ask all who are taking part to come there now. If any family members want to join the children up here today, they are welcome to come. I'll give you a minute to do that if you would like to. It's a better vantage point. We're going to begin with a couple of sentences about membership. These young ladies have worked really hard for six months, learning some of the work of the church, some of the faith of the church, the Bible, theology. We're so proud to have them today make their affirmation of faith and to join the church. In Jesus Christ, God calls people to faith and to membership in the church, the body of Christ. Baptism is the visible sign of that call and claim on a human life and of entrance into the membership of the church. The baptism of children witnesses to the truth that God's love claims people before they're able to respond in faith. God's gift of grace calls forth a response of faithfulness. Thus the triune God incarnate in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ gives to the church not only its mission, but also its understanding of membership. I would uh, invite Helen Smith to um, introduce this 
Today, I introduce to you Tatum Brumfield, Amelie Harris, and Ruby Moore. These young people are presented by the session for the reaffirmation of the baptismal covenant into which they were baptized. They now desire to profess publicly their faith and to assume greater responsibility in the life of the church and in God's mission to the world. They are ready to join the church. These three young baptized members of First Presbyterian Church now are prepared to become active members of the church through their professing of faith. They worked together as a confirmation class since February. The class has studied Bible, theology, creeds of the church, history of the church, and politics. They have wrestled with questions and made new discoveries. They now are prepared profess their faith in Jesus Christ and to join their church by a public profession of faith. The sponsors who along with me have worked with the confirmands are Helen Smith, Randy Smith, Phyllis Washburn, and Francis, Francis Mason. Reverend Gandy has guided the class. She will now lead them in their profession of faith for membership purposes. Thank you. Well, these five have been faithful uh, throughout these many weeks since we began the classes. Uh, Bobby and Francis and Randy and Helen and Phyllis have all um, made uh, huge contributions to the growth of the, of the faith of these girls. In baptism, you were joined to Christ and you were made baptiz baptized members of the church. In the community of the people of God, you have learned of God's purpose for you and for all creation. You've been nurtured at the table of our Lord and called to witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I ask you now, Ruby and Tatum and Amelie, respond together by using the scripture that has been highlighted all these many weeks in your confirmation class. same way, let your light so shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. And now, as you publicly declare your faith, I ask you to reject sin, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which you were baptized, tr trusting in the gracious mercy of God do you turn from the way of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? I turn away from sin and renounce evil and its power in the world. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? I accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love. Will you be Christ's faithful disciples, obeying his word, and showing his love. I will be Christ's faithful disciple with God's help. I will obey his word and show love to others with God's help. With the whole church, let us now confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Will you please stand and say these words together with the girls? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
And now as prospective members, you have publicly professed your faith. Will you be faithful members of this congregation, share in its worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, through study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? I will with God's help. Let's pray. Gracious God, by water and the Spirit, you claimed your own, cleansing us from sin and giving us new life. You made us members of your body, the church, calling us to be your servants in the world. Renew in these young people, Tatum, Amelie, and Ruby, the covenant you made in their baptism. Continue the good work you have begun in them. Send them forth in the power of your spirit to love and serve you with joy and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Ever living God, guard these young people, your servants, with your protecting hand and let your Holy Spirit be with them forever. Lead them to know and obey your word so that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you forever in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I call on Phyllis Mashburn to come forward. Please join me as we welcome the 2022 confirmation class at First Presbyterian as they have publicly professed their faith and expressed their intention to continue in the covenant God made with them in their baptism. Let us welcome them as they join with us in the worship and mission of our church. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you to share with us in the ministry of Christ, for we are all one in him. Amen. At the end of the service, the girls will come and stand uh, with me, and uh, I know we have our fellowship luncheon afterwards, but if you want to greet them then at the end of the service and welcome them into the church, that would be a lovely thing to do. So welcome all, and um, it is a, a joy and a privilege to have you now as active members of the church. We look forward to that very much. I just can't stand not to clap. Job well done, thanks be to God. Let us turn now to God to pray for the world all around us, the wide, wide world, most of which we don't see, but also to pray for our own beautiful, small, wonderful community, for our church and all the churches in our community and all over the world. So join with me now in prayer. Gracious God, as your people, we are called to love one another. Help us to do that with joy and understanding of your great love for us. Bless your church in the world. Bless the whole human family and your beautiful created world. Free the world from war and famine and disease. We pray for those who are in, that, in the midst of things such as war and famine and disease, pain and tyranny, things they have not chosen but have made their life miserable. Free our hearts from sinful thoughts and our daily actions from transgressions against you and our neighbor. Strengthen us in our efforts to reconcile all people to one another and to you. May the young people be educated and may their faith grow and mature. May the old be cared for and loved and cherished. May the hungry always be filled and the homeless housed. May the sick be comforted 
and healed only as you can do. We pray this with our hearts turned eagerly toward you, our creator and redeemer. Lead us to be your agents of change in the world. Send us among the disabled, the poor, the grieving, and the imprisoned, and make us servants of Christ truly. Hear our prayer, O Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We come to a time of thanksgiving. Let us bring our gifts, our tithes, our offerings. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you to all who are giving online. We appreciate your giving and your generosity as well. pray. Father, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to bring these gifts. We ask that you would help us to do the right things with these gifts that would be according to your will for us in this place. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll now prepare our hearts for communion. Please be seated. We come to the Lord's table 
knowing that here we will be fed the spiritual life, the bread of heaven, the cup of salvation, and God invites all to come. This is the Lord's table. We are recipients of this grace and so grateful that we can be in this place together. Please pray with me. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O God of mercy and might. In your wisdom you made all things and sustained them by your power. When you called us, when we turned away, after rebelling against you, we did not come. You called us back again and again, delivered us from captivity, made a covenant with us to be our sovereign God. You sent prophets to bring us back again, and finally your son Jesus Christ, to call us to justice and compassion. Therefore we praise you, joining our voice with choirs of angels, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all the faithful of every time and place, who forever sing to the glory of your name, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, as we come to share the richness of your table, we cannot forget the rawness of the earth. We cannot take bread and forget those who are hungry. Your world is one world, and we are stewards of its nourishment. Lord, put our prosperity at the service of the poor. We cannot drink this cup and forget those who are thirsty. Lord, put our fullness at the service of the empty. We pray, O oh God, that you will pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with him. Hear us now as we say together the prayer that he has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, giving thanks for it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant poured out and sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you eat the bread and drink the cup, do so in remembrance of me until I come again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
blood shed for you. It is a joyful feast of the Lord. It is a joyful feast. Let us enjoy, give God thanksgiving for this meal. Father in heaven, we give you thanks that we have joined with people all over the world today in taking this bread and this cup. Bless us as you have blessed everyone everywhere to be renewed by the cup of salvation to be refreshed by the bread of heaven. We give you thanks in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Will you stand for our final hymn? <laughs> Thank you for sharing in this special service today. Thank you for being present. Please join us for lunch. I would like to just say a quick prayer to bless the food. Father, thank you for the opportunity for us to have food and fellowship. Bless the food and all who've made it. Give us good pleasure today to join with one another as we eat and we think of your greatness your goodness, your abundance that you've blessed us with. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And remember, the girls will be um, at the door with me, so if you would like to say a welcome to them, that would be marvelous. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace now and evermore. Amen. Thank you.